Hi, welcome to uh, Database APIs for Asterisk. Um, so we could start with uh, who I am. So my name is Scott Murawski. It's on the slide. Um, so uh, I work uh, with my brother over here, Mark Murawski, for IntelliSoft uh, LLC. So that's our own company. We uh, primarily focus on call centers. And uh, so I've been uh, programming for like 15 years professionally. And uh, I'm a juggler, too. So just in case, right, just in case I have to present asterisk systems to jugglers, I mean, I could use this for both. You know, so I got juggling aspects and asterisks. You know, you know, I got the basis covered. Um, and uh, we're hiring uh, an asterisk slash Linux system engineer. Uh, so if you're interested in a job, then you could talk to me. Um, yeah, so uh, my favorite things to do is like middleware, and uh, I really like databases. Um, so like when I first started working with uh, Asterisk, um, I wasn't really using databases. I was just using like really focusing on the AMI um, and like doing like all this like real time event processing and stuff. Um, and it just like got messy. And then after a while, um, I mean like you know we use I, I'm also a web developer, um, so I use databases all the time. And then sort of like one thing leads to another. Uh, you're like, why not try to really take advantage of the, uh, of the database? So there you go. So why database APIs for asterisk? See, so I got like a little Lego. Whoop, I accidentally do that. Uh oh, there we go. A little Lego guy juggler. He likes databases too. Um, yeah, so why database APIs for asterisk? Um, well, first of all, I could say my database can make phone calls. Can your database do that? Um, not anyone else's database really could do that, like, but mine can. So I feel pretty cool. Um, and uh, yeah, so I was saying before, um, I'm already using um, the uh, database for all the web services. So like, why not you know, just like, use that for everything, like just everything possible? Um, and uh, the advantage. As a, like since you're using a data, like you know, I'm already using a database. Um, every other application could easily use the database too. So if you put fun uh, PBX functionality um, inside stored procedures or triggers, um, uh, then the uh, it's really easy to build uh, like thin GUIs because uh, the GUI or or any kind of like uh, interface, you know, so any sort of external interface is going to be really thin because all of the functionality is all built into the database, and then the um, the interface itself doesn't need an AMI connector, you know, so you don't need like 500 AMI connections like all over. Or um, even if you like centralize that, you don't need like proxy servers, you know, for uh, uh, you know the AMI connectors. Um, and you just get to avoid duplication, like any kind of thing that you're like uh, any kind of business logic that you're you find that you're putting inside the interface. You just put that in the database and then. Um, and then every other interface could uh, take advantage. Um, and then via the database, uh, we have an AMI connector right inside of the stored procedures. Um, and then you could send commands straight to the AMI. Um, and then the other cool aspect is uh, you could really take advantage of like what databases use. Um, I mean, the um, you know you could really take advantage of uh, exactly what databases do best, which is store data. Um, so, uh, you know, like we could store all the live call data in the database. So, like all the AGI, it writes all the live call data. So that way, um, any service, like a web service, um, could just query that, and then bam, like that is like the exact live call data, like right now at this second. Um, <clears throat> and then you have uh, a live call data. Let's say, like for conferencing, I'll be demoing later. Um, so the user could log in. Um, they have like the user ID, so that user ID gets stored in the live call table, and then you could do joins. You know, so like you could join up against any other um, user table, um, and then you could just extract out like whatever information you want like for that user. Um, yeah, and then the second to last point: do anything you want from a stored proc. You know, so I mean, stored stored procedures you could write them in any language. Um, we write them in Perl. We like Perl, and you could just do you know, anything you could think of. You know, so we open TCP connections like from inside the stored procedure. Um, and also, like, we could access uh, files um, you know, like a, on a separate topic. Um, 
that, uh, but also related to asterisk. Like we have our own custom file system. Um, so then like from within the database, we could access files like from our own custom file system to like then further trigger more asterisk functionality. Um, and you could use um, you know, any of this functionality from any language um, and all you need is a database connector. You know, so if you have an ODBC database connector, like there you go, you could just do um, dials or who knows what, like anything you want <coughs> uh, straight from the database. And uh, you don't need to do anything special. Like you're just executing SQL, uh, which is pretty nice. And um, so anyone have any questions about like, the general aspects of like, why you'd want to use uh, database APIs? No questions? OK. Um, so then the next step, um, to the conference bridge. So we have a conference bridge product. We have a couple of other products. Um, and they all basically work. Um, like they have the same architecture, and um, you know, we really focus on using the uh, database, um, and we have stored procedures um, to do th everything. You know, so if you if the administrator wants to kick somebody off from the conference, or just kick everybody out, you know, like end the conference or mute and unmute, like all these things, like start and stop recording, um, and then uh, this is like the hand up and hand down is uh, the. Um, you know, like the, if, if it's a moderated session, you know, like somebody has an a, a question, um, then they could signal the hand up, um, and then it could let the, the moderator know to, uh, you know, unmute them, like if they. Uh... Oh, is that, somebody's asking a question? Oh, is this noise or something? Okay, yeah, it's, it's confusing. Okay, yeah, this guy just closing the door. Um, I don't need to be like any further confused. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, so that, that's the commands. That's like sending the AMI commands. That's like one thing. Um, and then AGI, um, the AGI provides all the live call data and also logging. You know, so like right before we spawn uh, the Meet Me uh, for the conference, we insert data into the database, saying like, you know, here's like the, um, you know, here, like here's all of the user information, like the UID, like here's like the room number that they um, have entered, like here's their PIN, like you know, we track everything like, through the database. Um, and then separately, uh, we have an AMI event listener. Um, so the Meet Me um, outputs all of the, uh, uh, like, uh, the mutes, like you know, whether or not somebody was muted or unmuted. Because you can send a command to mute somebody, but how do you know they're really muted? You, know, like you have to wait for the event to get back. And then once that event is received, um, then that's uh, th it updates the database. Um, so you know you like mute and then bam, like the database is updated. And now every single interface across the board that's using that database could then you know easily say like oh like that, you know that person's muted. And also with talking status, you know so we get a talking status, we update the database that they're talking. And then um, on the web interface, uh, you know we have like a little green light saying like these guys are talking. Um, but any other interface. Um, You'd be able to do whatever you want, like with that particular, um, you know, w with those uh, field values. So all these guys, whoops, going the wrong way. Yeah, so all these clouds, they're they're busy juggling. You know, they need a conference. Um, so that uh, that leads us into the live demo aspect, and we know what happens with live demos. We just have to hope that they work right. Okay, here we go. So we have um, an active conferences uh, screen also. So I have my phone. Let's give this a whirl. Oh, except I have no service. Um, do, do you have any service? <laughs> OK. We're going to have to make the call then. I forgot to check that. We checked everything else. Um, yeah, so this is the uh, the edit conference screen. Um, so you could have a private conference. I mean, have like a little help there. Yeah, so private is a it's a it's protected with the pin. Um, so once you log in, I could show you the. Um, I have to like close these guys. Yeah. Well, you could log in. That's fine. Uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, one thousand. Yeah, uh, one, two, three, four. It's very, it's highly secure. 
Um, so he's logged in. There we go. Okay. So we go to active conferences. And active conferences. Yeah, Colorado box. Oh, there it goes. There's a little delayed. Oh, pretty good for a live demo so far. Okay, well, that's me logged in. And um, so that's like getting the data from the database. And I will show you the cool stuff in the database now. All right, so here we go. So this is the conferences. So this is live conference. Um, and then I'll show you guys the, um, the AGI and the AEL and like all that good stuff in a little bit too. Okay, so this is like viewing the, wait for it. Yeah, they're viewing the uh, live conference data. So room 1000, and then that's the start time. And then, yeah, like the conference, we log everything. So it's like, you know, conference log ID and like the particular conference ID. Um, and it's multi-tenant enabled too. Um, so that's the live conferences. And then the, the live members is more fun. I have to load the member schema first, like for the table. Sorry, that's a little slow. Well, while that's chugging along, um, uh, I could show you some snippets. <clears throat> okay, so the conference, the start of it all. Um, this is actually for like a slightly different demo system, but you know you could just change this to whatever you want. Um, so you, you know you have dial extension 1000, um, and then 1000 calls the conference login macro. So then once you're in the macro, uh, then it spawns the AGI over here. Um, so I just wanted to make a note that this is originally all in one line, but split for readability. Um, yeah, so it spawns the AGI, the conference module. Uh, and you get some commands. So the way we write the AGI um, is that it's all in one file, and uh, it, like there's like a big switch statement of like you know if it's this command or this command like handle the various things. Um, so it calls like the uh, action login. So that's the that's like a little snippet like of the AAL. So then from the AAL, um, we have like the uh, yeah and this is like other AAL snippets um, the the actual conference room login, um, which also spawns. Um, you know, the same conference module, but it has a different action, you know, like for the room login. Um, so that's like, that's how uh, this guy gets spawned. So this is the conference PM uh, main um, AGI module. Um, so we just have a function you know, subroutine called main, and then uh, given is that this is the same thing as a switch statement in Perl. Uh, so depending on the action, like you do various things. Um, so then you do like login or room login or join or kick or end, like, a, you know, all the various things that you would normally do in a conference. Um, so those guys spawn the actual stuff that we care about. Um, so that spawned the uh, call log conference start. So this is like just straight up Perl, like uh, in the, uh, that spawns like from the AEL. And this is where we do all the magic. So it's like the conference is about to start. Um, so we insert uh, right into the live conferences. And um, so and then here's the data. You know, so this is the data uh, that we've gathered like, uh, from the user. Like they, you know, they enter like, what room they want to enter into. And then presto, um, it's in the live conferences table. And uh, you could do anything you want, obviously, like from the uh, AGI. Uh, so we also spawn user events. And we just prefix all our stuff with Intella. So it's Intella conference start. And then if you do have uh, some uh, you know, AMI event listener, then you could pick up on all these events. Um, so that's the general gist of like how we manage all of the live data. It's all straight from the, um, the AGI. And uh, here's another example. We have the conference uh, user login. So it's the same sort of thing. Like when the user actually logged in, the conference was already created. So now we need to insert a member. Um, so the member is inserted with um, all the, uh, the user information. So we have the user ID um, and then the pin and like the join time and like the other various items like the bridge number. 
Um, so that way, like, we could just keep track of, of everything all through the database. Um, and then we also send you know, the associated event. Um, and then, uh, so for example, when the, conf when the user leaves, um, it's no longer in the live table. So we just simply delete it out. Uh, and then it's just all deleted based on channels. Um, so hopefully, uh, we could see the results of those SQLs. Oh, is it still stuck? It's not so good. That means the connection is pretty bad. That's a problem. OK. Oh, is that the snippets? Um, so assuming we did, do I have a? Yeah, so oh, it's really hung up. Yeah, well, I could, it might. Um, yeah, so that was the AGI part. And then here's the uh, AMI listener. Uh, so the reason why we can't do all of this like through the AGI is because we spawn the meet me, and then you're inside of the meet me, and like, you have no access. So either you would need to uh, hack up the meet me itself um, to like, do all of these live updates, or you need a, an AMI listener to gather the, um, the mute status. Uh, so here's an example. <clears throat> this, this, um, this is part of like a framework which you know, listens for events. Um, but here's like the meat of it, where uh, this the meet me mute status. <clears throat> Do I have water? Oh, well. Need a water bottle. Sorry about that. <clears throat> OK, yeah. Wow. <laughs> You're really froggy. <coughs> hey, testing. Well, better than nothing. <coughs> so uh, the mute me uh, mute status it receives this type of event like uh, straight from meet me, like the uh, event and then the channel and like the particular conference and the user number, and then uh, whether or not the person is muted. Or actually, like we have like a slight uh, event adjuster, so this might not be like the actual event. This might be like the the adjusted event because <coughs> we like to normalize things. But um, once we get that event, then we could <coughs> man, then we could do a, a straight update. Um, and we're updating straight up into the live members table um, and then matching on the channel. And then now that member becomes either muted or unmuted. Um, so then the interface uh, could then update um, the uh, mute status. So for example, uh, let's suppose that we'll see if this works. Um, so this is the, the web interface uh, control for muting. Um, so if I do a mute there, we'll see if that, yeah, so then you see that switched to uh, like the speaker with the slash on it. Um, so that's actually muted now. Um, so like the AMI listener received that event, and then it was able to update uh, the database, and then the web interface was reading that data, and it's like, oh, it's muted, you know, so let me change the icon for that. Um, and then along the way, uh, we could put our own uh, user events out there. So I can tell them meet me mute or, or unmute, like depending on the status. Um, and the same thing with talking status. So we could, I'll show you talking status. So if I unmute, if I unmute that, Um, yeah, so you could talk, oh wait, no, we only have one person. Yeah, uh, yeah, so if we had another person in the, um, in the conference, uh, there would be a, a small green icon that light up uh, when you get talking status there. And then, uh, let me switch back. Yeah, so this, this whole uh, mute and unmute and talking status, that's all part of the AMI listener. Um, then, does anyone have any questions about the, uh, the conferencing? Yep. Uh, if I understand correctly, you assume that the message is sent by a TV graphic to AGI event for a start and end of a call. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you do in the case they ask this uh, question, so then the call is vanished in access, but we haven't received any AGI event saying that the call died? Yeah, like upon an asterisk restart, we always clear out all the live table. Um, you know, because like, you know, if, if you're starting asterisk up for the first time, 
obviously there's going to be no activity. Um, so that's just part of our, we have a, a, a set of watcher scripts, like of which watchers, uh, watches asterisk. So if it notices that asterisk is down, it restarts it and then simultaneously it like, clears out all the live tables across the board. Um, because we don't just have like live for conference, like we have live for uh, call, uh, core calls. Like if you just um, have like one phone calling the other phone, you know, th they're not conferencing. You know, that's like a separate schema. Um, and then we have uh, the call, uh, call queue. Uh, so we have our own custom call queue, um, which does very similar types of things, like inserts all of the data, like keeps track of all the live data. Um, and then if asterisk restarts, I mean, it, you know, there'll be no more callers. Um, so we just clear out all that stuff and then kind of start over. Anyone else have any questions? So what time does this end? Like at 12.15? Is that right? Um, <clears throat> yeah, so and then uh, we could go to the uh, core, the core aspects. There you go. Yeah, so that's the, uh, the conference bridge. Um, and then the next slide. Uh, so the core PBX. Um, so this is how you make your uh, database dial. Um, so you can have uh, stored procedures um, that dial. Like uh, we have uh, triggers on our extensions. You know, so we store all the extensions. Like we basically store all the asterisk config um, in our own custom schema. Um, and a, a trigger upon the extensions um, actually like reloads um, asterisk. Um, and part of that would uh, rebuild the uh, Polycom configuration files. Um, so like you just you could just go into uh, the PG admin you know database tool. We use Postgres uh, for our database, um, and uh, you could just go and like edit extensions manually, and then all the magic of asterisks like happens behind the scenes. Like you don't need to do anything. Like it just it all happens like through the database. Um, and the other advantage <coughs> is the database. <coughs> you could have uh, all sorts of constraints. You know, so we could really verify that like a user. Um, even with like full access, assuming they don't delete the constraints, um, they cannot break anything at all. You know, because like everything is like fully constrained, and, uh, and no matter what they do, um, it's just the database like won't let you break stuff. Um, so that's like a, a huge advantage. Because if you give someone access to um, you know any of the uh, like extensions that come for you know who knows what, um, they just you know could wreak havoc like just put in like one extra period. Um, you know, but the database won't let you do those kind of things. Um, and in a similar fashion, so the AGI provides the live call data, um, and then we have uh, an AMI event listener uh, that uh, keeps track of uh, transfers. Um, so I could do, uh, I could show you some snippets. But, whoops, there we go. So snippets for the uh, call router. Oh, I gotta exit out of this first. That's the next set of snippets. Yeah, so the call router AEL. <coughs> um, so this spawns the actual call router AGI um, and then passes you know, some standard parameters. And then, so once it gets into the call router, uh, um, yeah, and once it gets into the call router AGI, then it runs like the command dial out. Um, so like, you know, if anyone's dialing anyone else, um, it just inserts into the live core uh, that calls. Um, so, and um, it just enters like a ton of information. Um, and it does a lot of other stuff, you know, so you can send out events, like, I mean, you can do whatever you want. Um, so that's the basic idea of, you know, uh, keeping track of the uh, caller status. Oh, jumping too far ahead there, okay. So, we'll see if this works. So we'll connect to a different system here. This is the local one. Hopefully the local one will work better. Oh, the member's actually loaded? Oh, the member's loaded. OK. There we go. Um, so I think we're still called in. Oh. OK. Yeah, so, we, so he could call in again. Is he calling in again? OK, he's calling in again. Okay, I'm gonna wait soon. Yeah, so he's he's just called in. Yeah, so that appeared there. Um, and then if I refresh this table, so this is the members table. 
then you get one row. There we go. Um, then we get the UID there. And then we would be able to join up that UID with the rest of the users table. Um, and uh, yeah, there's quite a number of other items in here. Uh, and the advantage is like with your own custom schema, you can add whatever the heck you want. Um, yeah, so then if we look at the, uh, these guys. So that's a live conference. So if we looked at the, at the conference, for example, oh, this probably may take a while. I probably shouldn't have clicked that. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, but I, I, it's gonna click. Um, yeah, so I could I could do. Uh, well, I'm gonna. I could just uh, kill, kill this and like reconnect. Sorry about all the problems. Close the program. Okay, there we go. So for the last demo. I might have lost like the server. Hmm. Oh yeah, it's regard. Okay, so I could connect to the local system. And then in live core, there's function. In live? Oh wait, no, asterisk. Um, and then we have, oh, that sequences. Um, yeah, we have PBX dial, so then I could start. I had a query prepared, but then since I just killed <laughs> PG admin, I lost it. But here we go. Whoops. So select asterisk that PBX dial, and then what was the uh, like twenty six? 2603 is one extension, and then 2604 is the other. And then we could just call him Bob. And then we could run this. And then hopefully, oh, there you go. So the phone is ringing. Is that phone ringing? There you go. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah, so you could hear the uh, echo. So they actually worked. We could hang up. Yay. <coughs> so, that, so that is dialing from your database, an SQL command, asterisk.pbx dial. Um, and then you, know, you could uh, have any other, uh, like you, know, you could replicate the entire asterisk um, you know, command interface. Um, so like every single thing you could do through the AMI, um, you would be able to make um, you know, an SQL function to do that. So you'd be able to have dial, and like you could have you know, hang up, or redirect, or, you know, or anything, any AMI you, command you want. Um, or you could e um, even run asterisks like from the command line. Um, so for an example, um, like for the, uh, I was mentioning the extensions. Um, so we have on, uh oh, 